Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and abundant Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless our study of your Scriptures and the preaching of your Word today, that the words of my mouth and the collective meditation of our hearts be well-pleasing in your sight, our Rock and our Redeemer. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, have you ever had an abundance of something? Maybe it is uh, an abundance of some sort of food, and maybe you're going to bring it somewhere with you, and you think, oh, this bowl is big enough, and you pour it in there, and it turns out it isn't. And what happens? Some spills over the side. And as I shared with the kids, right, maybe it fell on the floor, and if you have a dog, they were pretty happy about that mishap. Or maybe it's an abundance of care that you have as, in a, as a personality trait or an abundance of caution. Whatever it may be, an abundance indicates, that term lets us know, that there is more than is needed for the specific task at hand. That if somebody, you say of somebody that their cup overflows, it's they have more than they need for themselves and are able to give of themselves, whether it's money or their talents and abilities or their time to other endeavors, other people, other uh, activities. Well, that is what we're encountering today in our gospel reading, which is somewhat ironic because the object in question is described as a crumb. If someone were to tell you, I'm going to give you a crumb, you would think there's not much abundance in a crumb. It doesn't even feed me. But we're going to find out that a crumb from Jesus is more abundance than you'll ever need. But before we get into that specific story, it's really important to understand the context in which this is happening. In fact, it gives us a much clearer picture of what exactly is happening here between Jesus and the Canaanite woman and His disciples. So a couple weeks ago, Pete was preaching here, and he preached about the feeding of the 5,000. And therein begins this theme of abundance, that when Jesus comes into the picture, He has an abundance of whatever is needed by His people. Now, in that story, there are people who need to eat, and His disciples come to Him, and they say, it's near the end of the day, we don't have anything to feed these people with, you should send them away so they can find their own food. And Jesus says to them, well, why don't you feed them? And they're like, we only have crumbs. We only have a few loaves of bread and some fish. And Jesus says, well, give me those. And He starts to break them into smaller crumbs. And lo and behold, a crazy amount of people, 5,000 men plus women and children, all eat to their full. And then the disciples go around and collect baskets of leftover crumbs. That's the kind of abundance we're talking about when it comes to Jesus. And then the story goes from there. Right before this account, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and you get the famous line that you're paying more attention to the traditions of men than the commandments of God, and it's about the rules of uncleanness. And here again, food plays a role because the Pharisees taught and the law taught that if you ate certain things, you would be unclean, and Jesus has come to tell them that isn't what makes you unclean. It isn't what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean, but that which comes out of it because that comes from the heart. Well, the Pharisees didn't like this, and the disciples don't really understand what Jesus is saying either. They even tell Jesus, like, hey, you know, that kind of offended the Pharisees, and they're, I don't know if you know them too well, but they're kind of a big deal. And then they didn't really understand what He was talking about, so Jesus has to explain it to them. And that is where we get to our reading for today. And it starts with Jesus withdrawing to a Gentile region, the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he's not going there, noticed, to do works of ministry and mission. He's going there to avoid this confrontation he's having with the Pharisees because his time is not yet come. And while he is there, we get what happens in our gospel reading today. And the reason I know that the theme of abundance is still present here is because following this account, we have another episode of Jesus feeding a massive number of people, this time 4,000, and the same thing occurs. There's only crumbs available. Jesus enters the pictures. The crumbs feed everyone, and there are so many left over, no one knows what to do with them. And enter into the middle of that 
this crumb, this crumb of the Canaanite woman. So there's two themes at play as we read through this account and as we exegete it. One is that Israel has God's chosen people. They are His chosen people, but they are not recognizing their Messiah, hence the conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees. And two is Jesus' abundance is a theme throughout this section, and it even frames the specific one we're looking at. So, Jesus has withdrawn to this Gentile region of Tyre and Sidon, and a woman, a Canaanite woman, no less, sees Him, and Matthew draws our attention to the significance of this with the verbal cue of, and behold, right? Pay attention to what happens next. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and cries out to Jesus. Now, if we go by the Pharisees' rules, this woman is as unclean as it gets. Not only is she Gentile, but she's the ancient enemy of the people of Israel, the Canaanites. And on top of all that, her daughter is oppressed by a demon. So, you have a foreigner, an ancient enemy foreigner, and she has got demon stuff going on in her family. You can see people making the, the cross and backing away. So, what is she about? And if we think back to what Jesus was teaching the Pharisees a moment ago, what is it that comes out of her mouth? Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. That is odd. Why is a Canaanite woman addressing Jesus as Lord and son of David? Those are specifically messianic title terms. In other words, this Canaanite woman is speaking as a disciple of Jesus, as one who has faith. And what is Jesus' response to this faithful cry from a Gentile? He gives her the silent treatment. He doesn't say anything. We don't know why, but we can guess as we go further on here that it may be part of a ploy to teach His disciples something important. But it says, but he did not answer her a word. So then for the rest of this text, the question in our mind should be, what is really in the heart of this Canaanite woman? She could have just been hearing phrases about this Jesus guy and recognized him and just repeated them. Or she could be somebody who really believes. Well, how do the disciples respond being in a Gentile region And a Gentile woman is following after them and crying out for Jesus, and she just won't leave them alone. They say, send her away, for she is crying out after us. They're probably getting embarrassed. I mean, imagine all of them, they're walking on a pathway, and this woman just won't give up. She's crying out over and over again for Jesus' help, and eventually the disciples have had enough, because Jesus is not responding. Now, earlier... The disciples told Jesus to send all these people away because we can't help them. They need to get their own food. And so they're not telling Jesus to do anything with the people other than send them away. Here, something different is happening. Because of the way Jesus responds to what His disciples say, we know that what they're really saying is, just do what she asks so she'll leave us alone. So the disciples are telling Jesus, just give her what she wants. They've seen Jesus do this a bunch of times at this point. They know He can do it. So they're like, Jesus, this lady's driving us crazy. Just give her what she wants so she'll leave us alone. And what is Jesus' response to that? He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What business, in other words, what business is it of mine that this Gentile woman has this problem? It wasn't sent for her. Presumably, she hears this, and what is her response? Does she get offended or upset with Jesus? No, even more urgent her plea becomes. She comes before Jesus, and she kneels in front of Him, and she just says, Lord, help me. Now, have you ever been there before where you've been praying about something, a major thing in your life, and maybe at the first part of it, your prayers start out, they sound really nice, they have all the nice words, everything's the way it's supposed to be, right? Lord, Son of David, Jesus, you're amazing. You do so many great things for me. Just help me with this one thing. 
but it seems like Jesus isn't listening. It seems like He's giving you the silent treatment, and eventually your prayer just becomes, Lord, help me. That's the prayer of somebody who is clinging in faith, and that's all they have left. Lord, help me is all they can muster. Surely, Jesus is going to respond with, of course, let me help you. But Jesus says something surprising, and it's one of those things where I might reach out to one of you in the congregation and say, can you look at the text again? Is this really, is this really what Jesus said? The Jesus, you know, Jesus Christ, right? He said this. It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What? That is definitely one of those things that we hear it today in our modern ears and we think, that's got to be a typo. Jesus didn't really say that. Check again. Let's see, verse 26, and the answer is not right. He really said that. Jesus needs a PR guy. Should have known better. He show the first slide. So I want you to be thinking of this picture as we're going through this section here. One of Tucker's favorite things is crust from pizza. So as soon as he smells it, he's parked right wherever you are with that pizza. And ironically, it's totally unplanned, but yesterday we had some pizza. We had some friends in from out of town, and they had put the extras in their stroller, and we were sending it with them as they went home. And Tucker found it and pulled one of the pieces of pizza out. But in all reality, Jesus is being pretty blunt here about the covenant that God made with the people of Israel. He said He's come to save the people of Israel. So is He really calling this woman a dog? And meaning it as an insult that she's of lesser consequence to God? Or is he simply making a distinction in the promises of God? Because, I don't know about you, but Tucker looks pretty expectant and happy for what he might be receiving pretty soon. Well, let's take a look at a couple of the Old Testament passages that shed some light on really how Jesus is speaking here. The first one is we have the promise of Abraham from Genesis 12. And in that promise... God is promising Abraham that he's going to have descendants. They're going to be very numerous descendants. And then at the end, he says, Through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Right? Abraham is the first of who will become God's people. And even at the outset of all of that, God is already talking in terms of the entire earth. Okay, now jump forward to Isaiah in our Old Testament reading today. You can... Refer back to it in your bulletin if you wish. And verses 6 through 8, I'm going to read those again for you. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord and to be His servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. The blessing of all the nations of the earth has always been God's intention through his covenant with the people of Israel. And this is coming into fruition fully in Jesus. Jesus is speaking quite bluntly here, that's correct. But it is not to downput this woman, but it is to test whether or not what she's saying is faithful. Is she someone who's just repeating these words, or does she really believe Jesus is who He says He is and can do the thing that she asks? Well, the Canaanite's woman, if if Jesus' response was surprising, her response is even more surprising to what Jesus says. Her reply answers our question. She says, yes, Lord. So she doesn't get angry and dispute being called a dog. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Wow. 
if that is not a uh, response of genuine faith in Jesus as He is, I don't know what is. Jesus seems to agree. And the more you dig into what she says, the more amazing it gets. She agrees that it would be improper for Him to take the bread that He's bringing to Israel and give it to her instead. She's not disputing the distinction that Jesus is making, but she has faith in His abundance that even still through His plan, she will be served as well. Show slide two. She says that, isn't it true, though, that when the kids are fed, the dogs are fed too? That looks like a pretty joyful interaction to me. That's my niece, Nell, a few years ago. Tucker knew exactly where to be the whole time we stayed at their house because she would say, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. A feast of crumbs it is then. This woman just demonstrated the purity of faith that Jesus was just arguing against the Pharisees about. According to their laws, she was the unclean of unclean. According to what Jesus said, what came out of her mouth? Words of pure faith in Jesus. Not as some great teacher or prophet, but for who He really was and is. The Savior who has come to Israel and by saving And fulfilling His promises to the people of Israel, His abundance overflows to all the world. He has come to save her too. And His response says it all, woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you believe. And her daughter was healed that very instant. Dear friends in Christ, our hope like hers rests on the abundance of Jesus. He has come to fulfill the promises that God has made to the nation of Israel. It's true. But these promises, as we looked in the Old Testament, include how all the world is going to be blessed through the work of God in Jesus that happens in Jerusalem a few chapters after this account. Because we are indeed the foreigners who have joined themselves to the Lord, and God says of us, these you I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. That includes you, me, the Canaanite woman, her daughter, the Pharisees, and the disciples. Why? Because of the abundance of Jesus. Whenever Jesus acts to feed His people, There is so much given that there are baskets and baskets of crumbs left over. And it turns out that a crumb that falls from the table of Jesus is an incredible thing. It drives out demons, it cleanses sin, it brings forgiveness, salvation, and grants eternal life. Not so bad for a crumb. In the name of Jesus, our abundant Savior. Amen.